Hi there. Welcome back to the Board Game Specialists. I'm Carla. And I'm Melanie. And this is episode 87. And for our Valentine special, we decided to do a Take That Games. <laughs> so kind of an anti-Valentine special. <laughs> could, you could look right. at it that way, or you could look at it as if you can play these games and still, you know, be friends and be friendly <laughs> at the end of the night, then uh, you have a good relationship. <laughs> there's there's that way for seeing it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how about you? Do you have a lot of these type of games in your collection? Me? Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. lots. I, I don't have a whole lot. It's not my favorite thing, but I do enjoy it from time to time, especially when it's a shorter take that game. Yeah. I'm not yeah, a fan I, I of I think the, if it was going to be a long yeah. one to two hours of take that, I don't know that I would enjoy it. No. Or if it was but like, if it's a, like a 30 minute. Yeah, exactly. Can I stick but, it to you? 30 minute yeah. game? Yeah. I know. I don't <laughs> think I in. could do a three hour Euro where I build all this stuff up and then someone can just destroy it all. <laughs> I yeah. I think I would, I have played those and I didn't enjoy them. <laughs> But before we get into our top nine games, what have you been playing yes. lately? Well, since this Ooh, is our Valentine's we, we Day We forgot to special. talk about our sponsor. Oh, yes. I forgot to talk about our sponsor. <laughs> we have a sponsor. Um, our sponsor now is Games and Couples, and they are Oshrat Online Counseling Services. So yes. you can check them online and... Um, that's pretty cool that they you can just online counsel now. You don't have to be somewhere. It could be anywhere pretty much in the world, probably. Yeah, so much easier to actually do it that way, right? Yeah. Then it's a lot easier commitment to be in front of your computer than to actually travel somewhere. And probably more comfortable for some people. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, like, for sure. I think that would that's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's get into what you've been playing. Yeah, so being that this is our Valentine's special edition game, I figured I would talk about games that me and Lee have been playing together. So I'm going to call them our couples games, even though one of them is really not a couples games. So the first one is one that you lent to me, and that's the couples quiz. <laughs> and we like, decided to do it. We we're going to watch a movie last night. I'm like, okay, hey, let's do this first and see which one of us know the other best and then he's like so who do you think's gonna win i was like i think you're gonna win because i'm more chatty you're more of a closed book <laughs> 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 right yeah. so and it ended up being pretty tight now because it plays in three sections the first section mm -hmm. has like questions like uh who's more laid back and then you kind of figure out what you're gonna say what your answer is and what you think your partner is going to say and stuff like that right who's grumpier uh <laughs> what is annoying about your partner and stuff like that right um yeah and lee won <laughs> but then in the second round uh, I'm trying to think it's kind of, it's yes or no questions and it's to see how alike you would be. It's like, are you okay if somebody does this and you kind of put yes or no. And then you're trying to see like, if you guys match up the same way and we we're fairly close on that, like out of 10, I think we had eight that was the same. Oh, nice. Um, and then the final round is like more difficult questions and you do five of those. And the first one he got, what we got was name your partner's first cousins by name. Oh, wow. I have I 40 of them. <laughs> <laughs> he named two. <laughs> 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 oh in his defense like they don't live near me like it's not yeah. like we see them often uh one of them has visited a few times and he remember in burned hams <laughs> that's good but <laughs> did you know all his cousins you know what like uh, if he tells me oh trevor oh yeah trevor is his cousin i know that mm -hmm. but do you think on the spot i could come up with trevor's come up name, with the name. Oh, no yeah. And I know there's clay, and I don't know if those are it, but those are the only two I'm aware of. Hmm. So yeah, we didn't get that question. We could probably name each other's, though. I think. 
Oh, but that was like, <laughs> mostly since I'm from New Brunswick. We live in Alberta, so he doesn't mm-hmm. see them. And then there were so many of cousins out 40. there that I have. It's like I started laughing when I saw that question. I was like, oh my God, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't remember what the other five questions we had in there. Um but yeah, like these were like the harder questions and they were, <laughs> they were definitely harder to answer. Um, but it was, it was hilarious, but yeah, Lee definitely, apparently according to the game knows me better. Yeah. John but that too. was a neat little <laughs> game to play. Like I kind of want to do that again. Well, and yeah. you can play against other couples too. If yeah, you exactly. It. I think that's technically well, what it's for, but. I thought it'd be neat yeah. just for us to see. Yeah, it says you can play by yourself, but then you can't. Like almost like you yeah. do a couple's show. Yeah, kind of game show. Was a game show. Yeah. So well, we did it I with Chase be... and my son, Chase and his girlfriend. Oh, neat! And I think we all tied. Like I think it was really close. Oh, which really? Was interesting, but yeah, that's interesting for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So another one that I ended up buying, uh, buying, playing. Well, I bought like because I got a lot of games that you were holding on for and I picked them all up. <laughs> so I'm coming home with like a bag and a half and he's like, what? The-? <laughs> <laughs> but one of those was Catan, the dice game. And we ended up playing that. And that was really interesting. Have you ever played Catan, the dice yeah, game? I have it. It is yeah. neat. Like it's, first of all, it was my first, I was first right, player. I, think I bought Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. cuz it is a roll and uh, right. You have to, like the Catan map, Yahtzee, of course. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah, you have the symbols, but then you roll trying to gather the symbols that you need to acquire the different things. And mm-hmm. then you got to build the roads in order, so and you can't build the the settlement if you haven't reached it with your road. And you can build the night though, and then same with the cities. You got to build the cities in order. But then with the cities, like it requires 5 resources so it was harder to get um and because you get to roll your dice up to three times but and then it's funny because we started i was first player because it was youngest player first i was first player then all of a sudden somehow lee's one roll ahead of me i was like (laughs) what did we do (laughs) it's like did you go twice it's like i must have (laughs) like (laughs) but i thought it was so cool and you can play two ways there's a map one and there's a map two and map two definitely has more like it's more like playing Catan. your roads don't Mm -hmm. necessarily give you anything unless you get longest road um but settlements are worth one point cities are worth two points while on map one um each roads are worth one point uh your settlement starts at three then four then five and so on like and they become worth more and more and same with the city i think the city starts at seven then it's worth 12 and so on um but I thought it was such, it's super, super simple, completely luck driven because it's just all about the dice roll. But it was so neat. It was so interesting just to roll and then has that little Catan flair to it. Uh, but it was easy, quick game to kind of just uh, want to play something real quick and then play that real quick. And I quite enjoyed it. So that was my second game. I played Catan the dice game. How about you? What have you been playing lately? Well, the first game I will talk about, I kind of um, kind of mentioned stuff about it the last episode, but I didn't say what it was. And I got the oh, game yes. and set it up and I played 20 hours of it. And this, <laughs> this is <laughs> Mythwind. That was my last weekend, actually three days. I Because I was off Monday, so I played like almost eight hours a day of this game. Nice. I would you know, play a couple hours, go walk my dog, play a couple hours. We didn't have a games day. I didn't have one here and I couldn't make it to the ones out of town that weekend. So I just kind of uh, had a weekend to myself, but this is such a cool game. And it's not even, it's more like a a video game, I guess, like um, Stardew Valley or um, what's the other one? Animal Crossing kind of thing where you don't really win the game. You're just building up stuff and, you know, developing your farm or your city or however in those. I haven't played those as video games. I've played Stardew, the board game. But this one is um, you are, tr- you have five different characters in this game, four in the base game, and you rather play as a farmer, a crafter, a ranger, 
or a merchant. And then the expansion has an innkeeper. And each of those characters have a completely different mechanic. So you're kind of playing your own mini game. And you can play with other people and they will help build up your your city, but you don't really need too like it's it's okay. i feel like it's a solo game because you're not really interacting with them other than maybe you're helping to build like a building or something but you really don't need anybody to do that so i started out with the farmer and i played a whole year of with him and so that works out to four seasons so i would say four games basically because a season is um ran over 10 days and so each day you kind of do all your stuff and then you go into your next day. But the game production is just unreal. Like it's just so beautiful. Um, I got the player mat, the uh, the little extra minis, which I'm not a minis person, but these are these like giant um, sprite minis and uh, like mm. a fairy mini and they're just gorgeous. I've, I've posted them on um, Discord, the pictures, and I'm sure you've seen it all over now. It's all a lot of that content creators are um, putting up videos for this, but it's um, so yeah, you just go about your day and you do your own thing. Whereas the farmer has a polyomino um, mechanic to his, um, the ranger is like kind of like a deck builder programming um, type game. And then the, uh, the crafter is a bag builder. And then the merchant is like a little economic game you play. It's so neat, but it it's just sort of like an addicting thing because you'll play one season and you're like, okay, I'll do one more season and then just switch up the character. Oh, no, I'm because I had planned to do a season and then switch them all up, but I ended up doing a whole year with each character. And it just develops your town and, and then, you know, you move on and you kind of start fresh with this other one and you develop your own character with these different traits and, and um, skills and things like that. And it has no, like, there's nothing, you can't win. There's like goals that you can accomplish each season, but it really only just like kind of gives you more stuff to be able to build other things. Now, it's just the little story behind it because there's these events and you can go on adventures and and within those, that's how a story is kind of told. And so this is my first real story game that I'm really into. I have tried Above right. and Below. And I uh, I was kind of, all right, I was just more about the mechanics back then. And I just wanted to play the game. I didn't really want to hear anything about this story. But, <laughs> but now for solo play, this is just perfect because it's just kind of a chill game where... Um, you can just sit back, do whatever you want, and there's no pressure to do anything. You could play for 20 minutes, walk away. You can play for an hour. And the and it's not like one of those big campaign games where you have this big setup on the table and then you got to like take it all down. Well, this has all its own game trees. So it yeah. saves the game as it is and you just stack them in the box and then you're ready to go. It's like a five-minute setup, a five-minute like take Oh, down. that's nice. Yeah, it's it, they developed it very wisely. Um, there's some people saying like, well, there's just not much to it. You're just kind of rinse and repeat. But for someone like me who, um, needs that every once in a while, just to like, <laughs> I can watch TV and do this. And then I'm just kind of going along with my mechanics. And so anyway, I got, I would say maybe a quarter way through the event cards and then already started to panic. <gasps> what am I going to do when this is I'm done. So I've put it away for a little while to like savor it. And then, <laughs> then I'm going to go back to it maybe next weekend and bring it out again and do a couple games, probably end up doing a lot more than a couple, but, but it's just so beautiful and I'm really enjoying that. Now, my second one, I will talk about a couples game that John and I have been playing. Um, yeah. we had, he had asked me a while ago, do you have any survival games? Cause he's all about survival and, um, like when, we used to have our old house. This was around Y2K. We had a whole, um, like our storage room was full of like bug out equipment. Like, you know, he, when everyone was like, the world's gonna, gonna oh, stop right. it. Two, I think it was two, was it 2000? Not 2000. 2000. I don't know. It was yeah. one year. Yeah. But when the computers, they thought were going to crash. Anyway. Yeah. From 1999 to 2000. Yeah. That was when it was. So we had all this stuff like ready he had all this stuff i should say i never thought for a second it was gonna happen <laughs> but anyway 
Um, and so then we had all this food and all these like supplies and everything. And he's like big on watching all these survival um, shows. He would love to live off grid at some point, And we would, I, I would too, but I need a big enough place to hold my games. So that's the problem. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm like, well, I have Robinson Crusoe, but the rules are, it's so rules heavy that mm-hmm. I'm not sure he would love that. So. I've been looking for um, this war of mine. And then I remembered, oh, my friend Corey has this. So I had asked him to borrow it a while ago and I hadn't seen him. And he was coming to car treat. So I'm like, I, would you sell that? And he's like, I think I would. He goes, so he brought it and he goes, but I want you to play it first. And then if you want it, then sure, pay me yeah. what's fair or whatever. And I'm like, okay. So we played it on the weekend, uh, actually on Monday after car treat i got home from car treat sunday night and learned this game (laughs) because i i really want to play it and so what it is is you are um there's a a huge board in front of you with all these different cards and each card represents a room in this like kind of broken down house that you are like a shelled out house that you're living in to to um like keep out of the uh like where the rebels are um, attacking and stuff and you stay there during the day and then at night you go out and you scavenge for things well yeah. it's and it's it's um, made after a video game so they did the board game after a video game again so you never know how those are going to turn out but this one is really neat because you start it with some supplies and you have three characters and you have like a little storage room where you keep your supplies and then you have actions depending on how healthy you are. Like if you're tired, too tired, you might lose an action. If you are miserable, you might lose an action if you're sick or if you're wounded, those can all affect your actions. So if you are totally healthy, each character will have three actions, but as they dwindle, it'll go down to two or one. And so at the beginning, you usually start with, they each have two. So you can do things like you can clear out rubble in the house. There's some rooms that have rubble, so you can't get to these other rooms. You can um, search furniture and sometimes you'll find like canned food in there or, you know, like a knife or like things that you'll need. Um, You can also pick a locked door because normally, I mean, you can't bust through it yet. You have no weapons. All you have is you start with a shovel and a lock pick. And so you go in this door and then you might find some things that you can use like, um, you know, weapon parts or wood or something. But so then you gather all this stuff and then um, you have to drink and eat and feed everybody. And if you don't, then their hunger level goes up. And so that'll decrease their actions. But so you do that and then you go into the night phase where you send out a few people to scavenge and somebody has to stay guard back there. And when you scavenge, how you do it is you go to these locations and depending what location, it'll add a stack of cards to this explorer deck. Then you go through this deck one at a time and like some of them could just be like, oh, you have to um, make noise to go up this, up these stairs and then your noise level go up. And as soon as it hits a certain level, then the the owners of the place or somebody there will come out and you have to flip this residence card. And then you could be in a battle. You might have to give them some of your goods. And it's just, the decisions are so cool because it's like, it's so real. And then it's also like a story one, like um, near and far where it'll tell you, okay, this is what happened. Go to this entry and you read it. And then there could be just something about, Um, Like it's just a nice person who's, you know, really sad or something. And there's some really sad things in there, but it's really neat. Like it's done so well. And so the first time we played it, it was like a real rough play because each phase I had to kind of go through and make sure we were doing everything exactly right. So the whole first day took us about an hour. And then I'm like, oh, he probably isn't liking this. I'm like, okay, well, that was rough because I didn't really know, even after watching videos, like how to get through that, whatever. And yeah. he's like, I love it. And I'm like, oh, oh good. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, because I had said, well, maybe I'll give it back to Corey. And he's like, no, no, I love this. So then I'm like, oh, oh that's okay, nice. Cool. But yeah. yeah, it's it's really neat. Like I am surprised how they put this game together from a video game. It's not app driven, is it? Well, there's the app, you can get an app, but it's basically just the reading from the book. Like you can just not okay. use the, the entry book. Because it sounds like it could be app driven where you open the door and what is there? It is like, but 
Yeah. So you can use either the book that you have, the journal, right. what it's called, or you can, and you have to buy this app. It's not a free app to use instead of the book. But. Sounds like it'd be worth it. I, it is. Yeah. It's a, uh, we, I said to him, I'm like, okay, well let's, let's play one. And then if we like it, I'll get the app. Cause then it has like the voices and all that, which is kind of neat. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's Very really cool. cool. Yeah. So that is this war of mine that uh, me and John have been playing. And well, we played it for, we played three hours that day of the same game and it felt like an hour. Like it just went by because <laughs> you're making all these decisions. Like, and then you can build stuff. Like you can build a heater to, because cold air is coming in. And oh, there's just so many things. It's, it's oh, really cool, cool to check into. Yeah. But uh, let's get on to our take that games. Yes. Our anti Valentine's game. Mm-hmm. Will this send what? you to the couch for the night? <laughs> <laughs> so before I get started with my number nine, I want to do an or- uh, honorable mention because I did my list and then kind of picked a few that I wanted to have in there. And there was this one that, and I kind of went with like how much take that element is there to the game. And the one that I felt had the most, I put on the top of the game, uh, on top of my list and so on. Now, the one that made it a little bit further down my list, but I really love is Key Flower. Now, I personally don't find Key Flower to be really take that per se, but I put it on the list because I know people who will not play it because they get so mad at this game of people. Because with this one, you can bid on tiles and people can outbid you, which can be frustrating. And then people can go and activate the tile while you're bidding on it and says, okay, well, while you guys fight for it, I'm just going to do what it does. Right? Like <laughs> you can do that as well. Um, but then if you win the tile, you add them to your village. And then when you have your village, you kind of plan what you want to do. Say, I'm going to go activate this. Then I'm going to get these resources. I'm going to move them over here so then I can, you know, upgrade this tile. So then it's going to give me these extra points and that ability. And then I'm going to go do this. So you have like your whole plan. And then as you're about to execute it, somebody sends their own meeple onto your village because they can and activate (laughs) a tile you were hoping to activate because they can. And... A lot of people, because of that, feel so frustrated with this game. Says, you had no right coming to my village. But it just feels more take that because you built this village. Like, this is supposed to be your village. Now, benefit of it, if they have to come to your village, the meeple they use goes into your meeple um, pile. Because those are how you're going to be bidding on different things. But... This is just one that I thought was worth mentioning because I do like it so much uh, and it didn't make my top nine. Just because personally, I don't feel it's that take that, but Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have strong feelings that they feel it really does and will refuse to play it. So (laughs) how do you feel about that? Like on that aspect? Well, mine might be quite tame compared to some of yours <laughs> you'll you'll see like there's some that are I really take that but but some of them might like not you specifically mel but some of the listeners yeah. might chuckle at some of my take that versions but have you played key flower mm-hmm. we played it at ju- one of the melcons right and do you consider it a take that game um i didn't think of it but yeah now that you say it i would say it it is I, it like, can be, I guess. It depends on how you yeah. feel about it. As long as you go into the game knowing that that's it's happening. available yeah. to everybody. Yeah. Don't f- have a sense of ownership over it. You'll get the points, but yeah. the action is available. But yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So that was my honorable mention. But my number nine is a small card game. And I've got to say, most of the ones on my list are small card games. Mm-hmm. Um, but my number nine is Cover Your Assets which was uh, published in 2011 by Brent and Jeffrey Beck. It's a Grandpa Beck game. And this one is, I I like this one. You have cards and you draw cards and you're trying to create sets, uh, like two of a kind that you can put in front of you. And when you have your sets in front of you, those are your assets and they're worth points. So, and they have a value assigned to it as well. So maybe I have like two luxury cars and so I'll have a luxury car in front of me and that's my asset. And then, but on your turn, you can either 
add to your assets if you have a set or you can use your cards if you have a matching. So let's say I put two luxury cars and the next person also has a luxury car. They could use their luxury card to come and take mine and take away my asset. Mm -hmm. And it'd be like, what? No, don't like, you can't take the first one because you can't be left with nothing. But as you stack stuff on top, they can take, what's been stacked above so if they take my luxury car then i have the option of playing another luxury car steal it back or there's gold and silver as well that can be used that way they're wild uh or I, i've lost it and then whatever asset i had below is now exposed as well so it's good to kind of get more assets on top of each other because it kind of locks in what's below unless they become exposed again um but this whole game is about trying to steal each other's assets and add it to your own pile so that you get more value when you steal it from the other people. So I find this one definitely has a strong take that element. Um, a lot of times when we play these games, my kids, like Lily loves them. Jerome hates it. Yeah, so it depends on where you are with these type of games, but <laughs> this one is very simple to play. It is mean, um, but so fun. And that's my number nine, cover your assets. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. My number nine is Board Royale, The Island. And this is made mm. in 2022, 2020 by Atticon Kanker, Tuna Pamir, and Murray Tanzer. Now, this one is a card game. It's um, all cards. You have a, a small board that you have places to set just um, certain cards, but you have this big hand of cards that is, it's just resources, but it's also your life. So your life points, basically, if you have 10 cards in your hand, you have 10 life points. And you need these resources to build cards. And cards being like different tools or weapons or defense, or there's also these, um, oh, what do they call them? Uh, escape cards. And if mm -hmm. you get a certain amount of points, I think it's 10 points of these escape cards, then you actually win the game. Very rarely will anybody ever let you get to that point because the cards you are building can help defend against people, but can also attack people. And meaning that you're taking cards from them or just um, making them remove cards or killing them all together. Because if, if somebody ever leaves the end of their turn with a few cards in their hand, they are a sitting duck because somebody can easily just play a card that makes them remove resources from their hand. And if they're gone, they are dead and all their resources and cards that are laid out in front of them belong to that person. Now this can be a five minute game or it can be a 20 minute game. I don't think it goes any longer than that because once you start um, killing off people, you get so powerful that nobody can really stop you <laughs> unless there's yeah. two of you that are like that. But I've maybe played it about Ah, oh, six, seven times, and it it's always been a short game. There's it comes with a whole bunch of little expansions. I don't own this. My friend Cherry has this. You have it too, though, don't you, Mel? I haven't. I played it once before. My friend had it. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah it's, we play this it's a it's a neat little game, and and I mean, going into it, you know that it's there, like literally a take that from the point you start playing. There's, I mean, you can kind of make allies, but really nobody's going to keep their word on anything, but it's just a neat little game with a whole bunch of little things you can add into it. And uh, that's board rail, the Island, my number nine. Yeah. I found that one was, um, I got so caught up and like, Oh, I can accomplish this. I can accomplish <laughs> this. Oh, great. I accomplished all of this. Oh wait. I only have two life left. Yeah. Like, I'm dead. <laughs> and then got slaughtered and then they took all my stuff. And then it was yeah. just, I found like it was, and then the people I played with love take that game. So they really kind of laid on <laughs> thick on the take that side. So I was like, oh, yeah. maybe this game is just too mean for me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> nice. But yeah, good choice. Definitely fits this list, I would say. Yeah. Okay, my number eight. I'm going to count that as a series, but I've picked a specific one from that series. And this is Flux, the board game. So really any card game of Flux would fit in it. But the board game was kind of a neat 
spin on it. Now we have a lot of flex game. We actually enjoy it. Like playing it with the family. It's always one that we're like, okay, yeah, we'll play. Um, and then with the flex game, you have your cards and you're trying to put keepers in front of you and you're trying to have a goal. That's because the goal will be like, if you have this keeper and this keeper, you win the game. So you're just trying to get the combination that matches the goal. And then it's like, Oh, okay, great. I'm about to be able to win. But then they go and they change the goal or they take your keeper or they change where you have to discard down to one card or like everything about this game is going to change. But at the beginning, it's just draw a card, uh, discard a card and you activate it. So the board game version of it is instead of having keeper cards is you have this modular board, the three by three modular board, and you have to move your token to the location that is the icon you're trying to meet to resolve the the goal that is showing. Um, but then again, you can mitigate where you can move the tile, you can move the other players, or you can reset them and change the goals. And all that same chaotic fun is in there, but it's more of an area control where you're trying to get to that location. It's super cool. Plus like the token, like one's a meeple, one's like a little, uh, like sorry token. Like there's all bunch of different player components that each player has their own. So they all look different. Um, I just like the look of it. And then I like the play of it, but definitely it's like, okay, I'm about to get there. And then it's like, Oh, that goal. Now, hold on. That goal is gone. Now you got to do a different goal and you're nowhere near. And it's like, Oh, that's so close. Or you're about to get there, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm playing this card that swaps us, and so now I'm there and you're not. And it's like, <laughs> oh, so so much of that happens in this game, but it's I, I like it. And that's my number eight, Flux, the board game, which was published in 2013, created by Andrew Looney by Looney Labs Game. Awesome. Well, my number eight is already a crossover. Oh. <laughs> Cover your assets. I figured, yeah. Yeah, that one is such a good one. I like to get, as soon as I get that gold down, to cover it up with something else right away so that nobody can take that. But it's still mm. vulnerable because if somebody grabs what's on top, then that's open, right? So if you can get that down your first hand, because I believe nobody can steal until you have two groupings down or something like that. Yeah. So if you can get that one down first, then it's pretty safe. This one is such a fun game and <laughs> there's always somebody who's lucky in it and just like gets fed all these just perfect cards <laughs> and then someone who just gets nothing and no pairs, and, but it's still funny and it's a quick game, but I, yeah. I just love it. And uh, it's such a unique um, mechanic to it, how, you know, you, you're collecting, but you kind of want to keep some, even though you're playing your collection, but keep them in your hand in case somebody challenges you and then you can play it down. Yeah, I love it. My number eight, cover your assets. Good choice. And actually, it's funny, before the episode, we were like, how many crossovers do you think we have? And we figure we're like one, maybe two, yeah. three at the most. So we got Very one much, down. Yeah. We'll have to see if we yeah. were close. All right. My number seven um, is Cutthroat Ninja. This one was published in 2020 by Ben McGill. This one is one that you can find on Amazon for cheap mm -hmm. and it is fun i love this one and you go through these bad guys so you're all like each player has like our ninjas and you're trying to defeat these guys that are like bullying the village for some reason um it could be that the tax collector that's taking too much tax or different things like that right so you flip over the villain and he has a certain value to it and then you're playing your ninjas trying to defeat him. and But it's you're adding to the board. So you can add a ninja that'll do a specific single hit and it hits by that much. But then you can create combos. So if you have multiple ones, it creates a combo where you can actually hit him by more. Or um, different things like that, right? Where it's like, or I'm playing one of these and one of these and one of these and this creates this combo. Now I'm hitting him by this much. But you can also play cards that will steal the cards that are in other people's lineup because you add this as a lineup. Now, if you steal a card, you take what's at the end of their lineup, but then be like, ooh, 
I like that card you just played that. In fact, I think it would look really neat on my own. <laughs> and then you add it to your own, so it adds to your combo. And then first one to defeat the villain, then gets the villain, and then they get kind of those points. And then you go to the next villain and you start again. But it was just so neat. And then we played it with the kids that first time, and they're all like, oh, okay, this one is cool. And then you have, like, these cartoony ninjas that are given punch or kicks and different things like that. It's just really well made. It is so neat. Um, and, like, technically we're all trying to defeat the bad guys, but you will kind of take away from each other. And then you're trying to say, like, okay, well, I'm going to do this really good move but i'm gonna put afterwards a really weak punch so if they have to come after me they end up having to take the punch i'm kind of saving my good card and so on so so interesting i really like this one definitely check it out as i said it's like it's been available on um amazon super cheap games mm -hmm. so that's my number seven cutthroat ninja yeah i've played that before that's a fun one all right. My number seven is Evolution, The Beginning. This is made in 2016 mm. by Dominic Krapusha. And this is a two-player only game. It is? I guess it... I didn't realize it. <laughs> you oh, no, it's yourself. two to five. It said in the thing two-player, and I'm like, I don't think it is, but it's not. It's a two to five-player game. Oh. But it's... Uh, <laughs> um, this is the card game version of Evolution the bigger game. Now I've played evolution, the bigger game and did not like it because it is one of those where you build up all these animals and boom, someone can just destroy them. And so I didn't like it. I could probably play it again and, and be a big girl about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was early on in my gaming career where it's like, no, no, I don't want my things to die. But this one is a quicker version of it. So it's, um, you literally know that as soon as you play these cards, they could be, you know, wiped out immediately. So what you do is, I think, very similar mechanic to the first thing you do is you um, you get food from the watering hole or wherever it could be. And then you will play um, a card and you can either add a population, a different one, or um, increase one that you have. Um, and then you get to draw cards and then you can add traits or species to your card. So if I had like a flying animal with a shell, I could add that he's also a carnivore now. Like it's all kind of um, just made up things. Like well, there's there's typical um, animals there or um, dinosaurs and type things, but there are some that are, they use the traits of real animals, but it's neat because you can kind of make up your own. And then if somebody ever... Uh, like if another carnivore wants to eat you, they have to have the same trait. So if they want to eat you and don't have a flying trait, they can't get to you kind of thing. Mm. Or if you have a hard shell, I think it, I don't even know if they can eat you, but they have to like um, get through your shell or something. But it's really neat because after you, you know, add your, your um, traits and whatnot, then you eat. So if you have, depending on what type of animal you've built, they will eat whatever is available. So, I mean, there might be some more wa food left at the watering hole or you might eat other people's animals. And again, you need to have the same trait. So you're kind of going back and forth because you can see, oh, they have a flying trait and they have this. And so now I have to put on this on my carnivore or I'm not going to be able to eat. You can eat your own as well. <laughs> so it's, <Yes. laughs> just, it's kind of like a, a puzzle that you're kind of trying to figure out. But it is quite neat and it's very quick. It's like a half hour game. I've only played it at two players. So maybe that's what was why I thought it was two player only, but you can play it multi. And it's it's just really neat because it's a real quicker version. Like I really, the mechanics of that are actually really cool, but it is tough if you played an hour and built up these three animals and their population and everything, then all of a sudden someone wipes you out one whole population. You. You're like, no, <laughs> but yeah, this is a quicker version of it. And that's evolution. The beginning. Yeah. I've played evolution and we've played that one lots because the kids love it. And the more I play it, the more I like it as well. Yeah, that probably. So at first, I was like, it, "Oh, yeah. okay," and then we'll play it again. I was like, "Oh, that was good." And I was like, "Oh my god, this game was epic!" Yeah, because you <laughs> probably get so good, get wiser as you play as to how to keep, you know, popular. I I on. don't know that I have, but <laughs> it's like, okay, am I gonna go carnivore? Yeah, I'm going carnivore. Man, I want you guys all so big. I can't eat you guys. You're yeah. bigger than me. 
Yeah. Man, I'm eating my own. It's like, okay, well, I'll give my own so that they breed fast. So they always yeah. have Make lots of, of animals for me to eat, <laughs> but I'm eating my own animals. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting for sure. It is. Yeah. Good pick. All right. My number six is a two player only game. Uh, that is Santorini. That one was published in 2016 by Gord. Now online it says just Gord, although I know he has a last name because he's a local publisher, right? I've met him a uh, few times, but um, I'm not even I don't know sure. if he's like in Calgary, but I've met him a few times, always in Calgary. So I'm assuming that's where he lives. Um, but yeah, with Santorini, that now Santorini is really interesting because you're got the two characters and the other player has two characters and on your turn you can move and build and you can build the base level then there's a second level and the third level and the goal is to try to get one of your guy up above a third level and then you win you're king of the hill but um you can't just go from base level up to a third level you have to go one level at a time so as the same time as you're building you're trying to create a way for you to kind of step onto the location and you can also not build where you're at you can only build a joint from where you're located so you don't want to be in the way of your third level so that you can put your guy on it and then as you're doing that if you're about to build your first level and you're about to put your guy on it and then the other player plays a blue dome walking that space and nobody can go there. And it can be so frustrating. Plus, a few times when I play this, I've blocked people in a corner where I've built levels high so they can't get out because they can't. <laughs> there's not enough room to build like a, the next step to make it out. And then I kind of lock them in the Locked corner. And then I just kind of casually make my own thing. It was, they got the one guy trying to stop me. Um, it, you know, like that could be, I suppose, so frustrating to be on the receiving end of it. It's very chess. Like you're really trying to mm -hmm. keep, you know, one step ahead, but I just love this one. And it, it is like, you're in it to be the winner and then to sabotage the other person's from not for not, for the, keeping them from being the winner. Um, and it's it's very competitive. Um, but that's my number six, Santorini. Nice. All right. My number six is also a two-player game, and this is for real. It's two players. And this is Crave <laughs> made in 2019 by Brian Sloan. Mm. Now, this is the equivalent to um, Hero Realms or is it Space? Star no, Realms. Star Realms, right. Um, yeah. But it has a different theme to it. Well, I won't say equivalent. I'll just a lot of people say that's what you would kind of compare it to for mechanic-wise. Yeah. Um, this one, you are either playing as a vampire or a vampire hunter. And the cards in this are like these big tarot, car tarot cards, and they have like really cool hipster vampire art on them. And there's also two neutral factions. Um, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but like the Cinetars? That's not the word. <laughs> I can't think of the word, but there's two different neutral right. factions that can help you or hinder you depending what you do. But you um, will play out your characters like you you each have your own deck and they are different. So they're not the same. And you will, um, I get to play five cards, I believe. And depending what you do with them, you will either um, like play out a person or you might equip them with something you might put out a guard that literally just guards things. Um, if you're a vampire, you may put out a bloodsucker vampire. And that is basically, you know, how you'll track health. Well, the vampire needs to drink blood in order to increase his, like, get his health back. Whereas the vampire hunter just increases his health. And I did find it harder to play as the vampire. Um, mm. You've tried it. Now, I can't remember what you had I had asked if you thought it was harder to play as that but it's really neat because you um all some of them will also have like triumph points if they do end up killing someone they get an extra bonus or like um some that will die will get a bonus if they end up 
getting attacked and die. And it's just neat because all the cards and all the equipment and everything is so cool. And they all kind of combo with each other. You can combo them with both sides, some of them, but you do have your own little market of cards too. And so each of you have your own little market of cards and then there is one in the center. And it's just a really neat game with like really gorgeous art, I find. But it's uh, probably the first kind of dual deck builder that I've ever played. So that could be, you know, nostalgic for me, whereas like I (laughs) haven't tried any of the other ones, but it's really neat and I love it. And that's Crave, my number six. You haven't played Star Realms? No. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I almost was tempted to get Hero Realms cuz I prefer fantasy over space, but yeah. Then when this came out, they said, "Oh, this is kind of the thing." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, I'll go for this cuz this It one- has a very strong similar element for sure. Having played both, I can see that. Um and I get mm-hmm. what you're saying, like personally, I'm bigger into fantasy than space. And I had both, but I sold Hero Realms because for some reason, yeah, you said the space I just like the space one better. I don't know why it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> it is what it is. All right. My number five is hilarious because it is so dark, but comical. And that's Gloom. So oh. Gloom was published in 2005, <laughs> created by Keith Baker. And each player plays a family and you have your different family character cards and you can get into like the backstory of it. Right. Cause you'll read, like you have like a different description about it. And then on your card, you're going to be playing things in yourself. And then you're going to be playing cards on the other players. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to depress your family as much as possible so that you get as, much of a negative score as you can and then when you have a nice low score you kill them off and at the end of the game is whoever has the most negative point is the winner so you'll also have some like cheerful cards that you'll play on the other players so maybe the other player plays the card says oh um she was you know uh dumped at the altar and then the husband never (laughs) showed up so she's really upset over this and she gets like negative two here and negative one here because these cards are see-through So when you put it on top of your character, you still see the character, but it has like, it overlaps different things. So the score that's showing is the score you're getting. So now it's negative three points, let's say. And then I could go and play something. Oh, you met a new friend at the park. And it's like, yeah, that's too bad. You were dumped at the altar. So you went for a long walk and you ended up meeting somebody so much better. And you made this great new friends. And then you forgot all about your ex fiance so you got all cheered full and then now it's like you're at plus two and it's like darn you oh i like it because you you really are trying to get them and then it's funny because you play two cards on your turn but if you play a death card where you kill your character off that has to be the first card you play so you can't play a negative card and kill them off right away you have to wait a whole turn so a bunch of people come and mess with your with what you're building on. Um, and it's, but then the story that it builds and then the whole dark theme of it is so <laughs> hilarious that it makes it super fun. Um, one thing I would caution you is if you play this with a bunch of teenage boys or preteen, it was all preteens at the time, every story is going to be about farts and poops. So <laughs> it was like, I was like, I don't want to play with you guys anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing but on your own. <laughs> they you just you know be warned. But it, it it was it was like they all enjoyed it. It was good fun. Um that's my number five, Gloom. I've never played that one either. I've seen oh, like wow. the cards and things, they look cool. But yeah. All right. Number five. Mine is Survive Escape from Atlantis. And this is made in mm. 1982 by Julian Cortland Smith. Now this one is is definitely a take that game, but it's like I find it still with tongue in cheek. Like it's just a, you know, going into it, you have to be the one with the highest meeples left standing that have made it to the island, which is in the corners of the board. Um, you have this big board with it's covered with water, and then you place all these different um, different terrain tiles on it to build it up. Um, you have 
I forget which ones are on the outside, but they are kind of the, the thinner ones. And then you have a thicker tile that you place on near the middle and then the thickest quite in the middle. So you start the game um, placing meeples on your own meeples onto these tiles and you are typically supposed to know what number you have put there because they go from one to six or eight, I think. But who remembers what out of 10 <laughs> meeples, what you put where you kind of probably put your more um, higher ones on the thicker terrain because they maybe have more of a chance, but I don't even know what the strategy to this one is. It's just, it's just kind of a fun game. So place those and then everybody gets to place a couple boats and then you, you start and on your turn, you take one of the terrain tiles from the outside and you remove it. And if there's somebody on it, they are now in the water and vulnerable. And so um, then depending on what you flip over that tile and it could be something, it could be um, something that it could be that there was a shark in that spot and you literally place a shark there. And if there was a meeple there, they're dead. Um, it could be a whale. It could be a boat. It could be all different kinds of things. It could be a tile that you can save and use at another time. Um, and then you're going to move your people and you can move, I think three movement and you can split them up or you can um, use one like you, move one twice or three times and that's including boat movement but once you get your person into a boat you can move it you could wait to get more people in you could wait to get have other people get into your boat because then um you're both kind of sharing it so it's less likely that somebody's going to take that boat um and all you're trying to do is get them safely to an island and as soon as they get there they're safe they can't be um killed so you're doing that but then at the end of your turn you roll this um forget what the die is called, but it's kind of like it, so you roll it for to see where the sea creature is going to appear. And if he appears anywhere where there's a person, they're dead immediately. Um, you could roll that they uh, move a certain amount of movement and then you get to choose where they move. And so you're just really trying to kill everybody and just save yourself. <laughs> and it's if the production of this game is so cool too, because they're all these really cool wooden. Um, well, the meeples are plastic, but the the boats are really neat, and then all the sharks and the. Um, I think I also have the. Um, oh, what is it? What are they called? These the white, not the serpents, but the uh, giant squid or something. Oh, and there's okay, all yeah. different things that they could come on land and grab you off the land. <laughs> and and then the game ends when you b dig out one of the middle tiles and it's um like a whirlpool or volcano or something and then it com immediately ends and you count your you grab all your meeples that were safe and you flip them over and you add up what the points are in the bottom and whoever has the most wins. It's just a fun game and you can play this with I think with the expansion like six or eight people even maybe not oh, wow. eight but and we've played it a few times with it and it only lasts i think it's only like an hour long game either way but it's super fun i love it and that's survive escape from atlantis neat yeah i have never played that one but you really about it a lot so oh, i yeah. am intrigued yeah okay my number four is another small little card game and this one is more of a hidden role game and that's cool. And with this one is published in 2012 by Ricky Tata. And what's interesting with this one is everybody starts with two cards and they keep it face down in front of them. And each card has a different ability and you take turn activating an action. So there are some action that's available to everybody where you get a coin or uh, things like that now, or you can kind of, it's, don't think it's assassinate, but do a coup. Uh, that's available for everybody. Now, for the other stuff, let's say I want to collect three coins. You can only do that if you have the Duke. So I could be like, okay, well, I have a Duke, so I'm going to collect three coins. Now, I could potentially not have the Duke and not legally be allowed to pick up those three coins. Now, you can't stop me unless you're going to challenge that I'm lying. And one of two things can happen. Either I reveal that, yes, look, I did have a Duke and there's, I think three in the game. And then that gets discarded and I get a new card. And then because you were wrong, you lose one of your card that's discarded. Now you're down to one card or 
you were correct. I can't reveal a duke. So one of my card is discarded and I'm down to one card. And this is like a one uh, last man standing. But then <laughs> as you're collecting coins as well, you can have uh, enough that be like, okay, well, I'm going to use my assassin to assassinate you. Um, now, I, do I have the assassin? We don't know. Now, there is one card that can block the assassin. And you could be like, well, I'm blocking it with, uh, you know, my Contessa or whatever it is. And be like, huh, but do you really have the Contessa to stop my assassin? So one of us would have to challenge. And then so one of us is losing a card, right? And then if you reach enough coins, I can't remember if it's 10 or 12 coins or something, then you can coup. And then be like, hey, well, I'm going to do a coup on you. And you can't. <laughs> You can't block that. You lose a card. And, but it's, so it's like, it's like, quit picking on me. <laughs> it's yeah. like, but it's so entertaining. It is so neat. And this one, we've played it lots. Nick, I think has won every time he's played so far. Um, and it's one that goes over well. Um, and that's my number four. Cool. I think I played the second version of this Avalon. Avalon. Yeah. Yeah. That one. I played wins. Yeah, yeah I like, have Avalon. I haven't tried that one, so I don't know how it compares, oh, but awesome. All right. My number four is Paris, the City of Lights. I didn't want to say it in French because mm. I would have butchered it. <laughs> um now this was made by Jose Antonio Abascal Aspo, and it was all one name. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. That's a big name, but it's made in 2019 too. Now this is a two player only game and I bought this game because it was so pretty. It was tiling and I thought it would just be a lovely walk, day in the park playing Paris. And <laughs> This is a mean game <laughs> <laughs> because you start off, you have two phases in the game. The first game you um, are placing tiles and it's neat because the box is the actual game board. So it has all these different colors of tiles. Well, three different colors of tiles. There's your color, the your opponent's color, and then a neutral color. And you are placing different tiles or your tiles have those colors on. So you're placing them in the city and you all go through that phase, but you can place a tile or you can grab a building. And, um, you don't want to grab too many buildings because at the end of the game, if they are not placed on the board, they're worth negative points. So you kind of want to balance that, but you also want to put down the tiles as soon as possible because you're making your pattern of how you're going to place your buildings because your buildings have to go on your color or the neutral color or both. I mean, but they can't go on the other person's color. So they have their plan. You have your plan. It doesn't, e this isn't even the mean part. Yeah, but it is still kind of mean because they can block no. you right there. But then you go into the next phase and you place your buildings and how you want to place them is you want to be close to these um, street lights because those are going to be the multipliers of how you will score points, which are your tiles or buildings are connected to these street lights. And I find this so thinky that it's like, I, I'm sure I haven't even tried this with John yet. Um, I think I played it oh, with really? Cherry. I played it with Hannah and I just can't wrap my brain around <laughs> placing them, getting my buildings, and then also having them be near a street lamp. So I've only played it a couple of times, but I, and Cherry didn't really like it because it was too mean. Um, I haven't <laughs> played it again with Hannah, so I will have to try it with John, but it's, it's just so neat how you can literally like destroy their whole plan. Cause you have this plan of how you're going to put your building. Someone puts one right in the middle and it's screwed mm -hmm. the whole plan up. And you're like, Oh, you also have these postcards that are these beautiful, like art, nice art on these postcards that you can use as special abilities or some of them can be used as a really neat blocker for the other person as well. I find it's like very chess like in like you really have to think of the offense and defense and what am I you know do I defend now or do I go for that building because I need it but then they might put something here and it's just so interesting when I saw first would see this game kind of pop up I'm like oh nice little tiling game and then I watched a video I'm like oh that looks interesting and I played it and it was like Oh, this is really mean <laughs> for me anyway, but I still like it. And uh, it's the mechanics are just so neat. And that's Paris, 
The City of Lights, my number four. Yes, that's a good one. I purchased that one recently from our friend John, and then me and Kayla played it yeah. a few months ago. And it was so neat. And then, yeah, yeah, she totally placed a thing where she used the common color and blocked out what I was hoping to be able to put <laughs> in there. But then I was able to get one of the special abilities that allowed me to put <clears throat> a, like a purple tile on something that gives me access to something else, which totally messed her up. And it, it was, yeah, it's, it's very I, tactical. I didn't even think of that. You can't it's have a tactical. main plan because it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I think it could be like, I don't know. I'm just going to wing it and see yeah. what happens. And you could win or you could lose. But yeah, exactly. it's, yeah, like, and there's a lot to consider. It's like, okay, well, don't want to grab too many buildings. She had grabbed too many buildings. Oh, Some of she? them didn't get to go. But then also positioning them with the, the street lights and Yeah, every, very interesting. That one was cool. Yeah. All right. My number three is Downforce. And this one was published in 2017. It was created by Rob Davio, Justin Jacobson, and Wolfgang Kramer. And this is a racing game. But what's really mean about this one is you'll be playing cards. <clears throat> and the cards is going to move a lot of different cars on the board. And some of them you own, some of them you own, don't. But you do want your own car to win if you can. And you're going to be bidding on who you're hoping or think the winner is going to be. Um, so, But you can play these cards that will move multiple different cards. And where the mean aspect comes in is like, okay, well, I'm going to play this one, which moves blue by five. Oh, but look at that. Blue stuck behind red. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to move at all. And then... Because I'm not bidding on blue. It's not my car. I don't want blue to win. <laughs> and blue's your card. And so you kind of, now that you're blocked, I'm going to play all the big blue numbers. And now yellow moves and they were by four. But, oh, you're stuck as well. You only get to do two of those. And then red gets to move and then he gets out of the way. And I find like that just naturally happened in this game where you were blocking each other because the board it's a racetrack and it goes where it's three wides, four wides, and it's two wide, and then it's one wide. And then the cars gets in each other's way. Like it creates this really chaotic race, mm -hmm. which is so entertaining. But one is like, Oh, I noticed that you're blocked behind the black one now. So okay, quick play all the big green ones. And then <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. And it does like, Oh man, like guys, I'm not going to make it across the finish line. Now. <laughs> it's like, and it, the game can change so quick. And it'd be like, great. I was bidding on blue this whole time. And now blue's like all the way in the back and he's not going to win. And now he's oh. <laughs> like, so it is interesting. I quite enjoy this one. Um, and that's my number three down fours. Yeah. I didn't even think of this one to put down on the list, but definitely you can screw people in this one. So <laughs> good. Especially when you can move them and then they're like stuck somewhere and there's like yeah all the cars are ahead of them and there's no way they're going to get to move until they move all those other cars it's neat yeah all <laughs> right my number three is radlands made in 2021 by daniel pechnik and this one is also a two-player only game this one is Definitely a take that game because you're just trying to destroy the other person's three camps. <laughs> so yes. you have, um, I don't have the player maps for this game. I've looked to buy oh, them separate, no, I I did. but I don't think, I think you just have to get the, the whole um, deluxe version, which I may do one day when I can find it and then just sell my, my little game. But the little game is really nice too. Cause it had like the cards are still beautiful and everything. You just don't have, the player mat, which shows you exactly where to place everything. And so first of all, what you do is you have a whole stack of camps that you choose three camps from both of you, and you will place them at the back. So kind of right in front of you on the table. And then you have three spots in front of each camp and that's how you protect them. Um, there's just empty spots right now, but until you play your cards, cause it is a deck builder, you draw, I can't remember how many cards, but you you'll draw cards and then you can either place these cards by paying the, um, by paying water. Water is the currency in this game. And you always start with um, a certain amount of water and so you can play these cards down. You can um, junk cards 
to use their ability on top. And then that is like one thing you can do. So sometimes it could um, cause an event to move up. And you also have these four slots. I think it is for events. And when you play an event, mm. it'll say what slot to put it in. And depending where it is, it might be at the back and it'll be a while before it, it happens or it could be right at the front and it could happen right away in the next round possibly. And what those do are usually like an attack and they will do something to the other person's camp. And if they have no protection on it, it takes a hit. And I don't think they you can kill them right away or destroy them. I think it has to take a you few. You damage minutes. it first. Yeah, then you damage destroy. it and then you yeah. do it. And normally I didn't like that the the whole damage and health and stuff, but it's so neat how you can play these cards and then um certain cards you can just activate as well and they will do an attack and damage um if you don't have enough water you can flip over just like play the card face down and it has a punk on it and he is worth one power or whatever so if somebody comes to attack at least you have something protecting one of your camps if you haven't gotten someone to guard them and it's just yeah. the art on it is so cool it's like a 19 you know 90 like fluorescent pinks and purples mm -hmm. and and yellows and it's the art is just so neat and it's it's also a quick game like i don't think i've played it longer than 30 minutes where no, it's happened yeah, it and quick. and it really does go back and forth it's not like oh you got one of mine and you're pretty probably gonna win no because there's a lot of back and forth in this and it does come down to the last one sometimes so, i mean sometimes you can get overpowered with some of the things you do but it's really neat, and I like this one, and that's my number three, Radlands. Yeah, I like the event cards, too, because it's like a ticking time bomb. Yeah, you know it's like, oh, coming. Okay, it's a level three. It. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, no, it's move forward. Oh, my God, that's going to hit next round. <laughs> what does that do again? Oh, no, that's going to be bad, and there's nothing you really can do about it. That's that's happening, and you can just see it, like, haunting you. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, no. Quick, what can I do before? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's great pick. Yeah. All right, my number two is a small card game, two-player game, that I played for the first time at Falcon, and this is Winter. So Winter was published in 2022, created by Maria Blasco Hernandez and Enrique Blasco. And you play Light Snowflake versus Dark Snowflake. And you add tiles, I think they're tiles, into this swing. And when you create a cluster where there's four snowflakes of your own color together, you get to place one of your token in the middle of those. And if you're able to continue growing your cluster, then you get to add more tokens. But then at the same time, you're going to sabotage the other player, to, uh, moving cards, removing card, making their tokens fall off. And the goal is to become the last player on the board. Um, and I lost every time. We've played like, I was like, okay, I want to rematch. Let's do it again. And then I lost again. I was like, okay, one more time. But it is a really quick game. It's super pretty with the little snowflakes mm -hmm. everywhere. And there's just a two-tone snowflakes and the icon. It like to look at it is like, oh, that's such a cute game. But it is <laughs> mean, mean and nasty. Um, and but it's it's really entertaining as well. And it's super, super quick. I find I can take the mean if it's quick, yeah, <laughs> it's over mm -hmm. quickly. Um, and this one does play super quick. And then after it was like, okay, I want to try that again. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's super neat. That's my number two, Winter. Yeah, this is a cute game. And they have just come out with Autumn. So I'm curious to see. I haven't seen what it's like or what it, if it's yeah. a two-player or what. But um, I have a video saved of it right now that um, I need to watch and see what it looks like. Because that is my favorite season, Autumn. <laughs> All right. My number two is Mission Red Planet, made in 2005 and then remade in 2015 by Bruno Cathala and Bruno Fiduti. So this one is, it's an interesting game too, because you are um, putting these little aliens, or not aliens, I guess you're, you're um, uh, what do they call the people that fly? <laughs> Astronauts. Astronauts. <laughs> 
all those people <laughs> in, in spaceships and then you will ship them off at some point. But you have everybody has a hand of cards, which is, I believe, one to nine, and they all have different types of actions on them. And it's one of those ones where you will just choose a card, put it face down, then everybody well, no, not everybody flips. You'll start the countdown. Um you must start from nine and go count down to one, just like you would a spaceship. Okay. I thought it was one to nine. But anyway, so you count down and whoever has the first one, they will flip them. If there is a tie, I forget how you do the tiebreaker, but whatever, you will play these cards and do the action, whether you're placing people in the spaceships or you're uh, moving a spaceship or doing all kinds of different things. But um, once that round is over, um, or once those actions are done. You will, you have this planet, um, the red planet, obviously and it has all these different sections in it and you will get to choose where the spaceship goes. So you are trying to area control this whole planet basically. And so you want like, you know, the high point sections to be where you are, but some of them, you don't know what's happening because there are these discovery cards that one action will give you and you get to peek at this card and choose where to put it. So you could put a card down on like this valuable plant, um, piece of the planet where everybody is trying to get to, but it's like going to blow everybody up or it's going to move everybody or everybody here is going to be worth negative. So you don't, you, nobody else knows what is happening there but they might have a clue if you're putting it there and all of a sudden you're not going into that section or something. Um, there's a, another one where you can banish people from the planet into this other like black hole or something. And the funny thing is the second time I played the game, um, that was a strategy because I think I had a discovery card that made those worth positive points. So I was just kind of being a jerk and got everybody to kill me, but they didn't know that they were sending me to this I don't even know if it's called the black hole, but it's this area. And I was actually getting points off of all these, these people. <laughs> um, I luckily I played it a second time. Cause the first time I played it, I think I ended up with seven points, which is really low. And this was one of the games we had played on like a marathon. So it was like at three in the morning or something. So we were all just brain fried at the time. But <laughs> after the game, I was like, I don't know if I liked that. <laughs> like, I got seven points, but we ended up playing it again. And I, I did get how it could be fun because it's it like can be it's changes up so much depending on those discovery cards and um, the cards you play and what people are trying to do and where they're moving to. And it's it's just a, it's kind of a silly game, but it's it's neat. And it's, I feel like it's almost like a party game. Like you play it in a party atmosphere. You can't take this game serious because everyone's just trying to screw everybody. It's not like, you know, you gang up on one person because you're just trying to get everybody to lose, you know, but it's, it's neat. And I don't own this game. Do you own this game? I own the first version of it, but I haven't played it yet. Well, I don't think it's much different. I think they just remade yeah. it because it was out of print. Like, I don't think it's, yeah. it might have a little bit of art difference, but I don't think there's much difference in gameplay. But yeah, we'll have to play it with a big group sometime because it would be, yeah. maybe we'll have to bring it to Gobfest and play it at night or something. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe, maybe before night yeah yeah okay now that we're all brain dead let's do this yeah <laughs> you didn't learn <laughs> yeah well I, we won't be up till three in the morning though we could play it at like nine i think we'd be okay oh okay okay <laughs> anyway that's my number two mission red planet nice so we're on my number one and this one when that was when we said okay we're gonna do like an anti-valentine take that list this was the first one that came to mind. I knew this one was on my list. And that's Stick'em. Oh. Stick'em was published in 1993, created by Claus uh, Palesh. And it's it's a trick-taking game. But what's really neat with this one is you have, like, the different colored suits. Um, and at the start of the game, you're going to get your hand and you're going to look at what you got. And you got to pick a pain card. And you're going to take that card and it all gets revealed in front of you. So we can all see what we've picked as our pain card. And those are the points that if we collect any of them, they're going to score negative points, kind of like hearts. So if you end up with hearts, they're negative points. But we're all going to have different. Now, it's possible we've picked the same thing and we're both trying to avoid the same thing. But then as you play the trick-taking game, I'll start and I'll play a certain colored card. 
And then if everybody plays that same colored card, whoever played the highest card wins that trick and then they take them. Now, if people played different colored cards, then whatever other color is that's not the lead card is the suit. So if I play started with a yellow, then anything that's not a yellow is going to win the trick. And then whatever's the highest of those non-yellow cards wins the trick. So I could play, I start with the yellow, then somebody puts in a blue. Now, so the blue is, is winning the lead. So I know guarantee yellow is not going to win. Uh, and then somebody is playing and says, oh, well, they're about to win this trick. So I'm going to put in green, which is their paint color, because you're trying to sneak in a way so that they have to collect the color they really don't want to collect, because then that's <laughs> going to total as negative points. And that's what the whole game is called, right? Stick them. I'm going to stick you with this, and it's going <laughs> to suck. And it is... It is mean. Like, that's the whole point of the game is like, okay, how can I get you? Take the cards you don't <laughs> want. And you're trying to, and then sometimes like, oh no, oh no, I'm taking three. Oh no. <laughs> like, but it's so neat. And then Lily, that's a, when we played this one, she loved it. And I was like, that's when I realized, like, she likes those. She mean seems games. to like them. Yeah. Yeah, so, but this is a really, like, you, if you like trick-taking game, it's a no-brainer. This is a great trick-taking game. And then with that whole pain color portion to it, just kind of adds so much interest to it that it's just an amazing game. So that's my number one, Stick'em. Yeah, that is a good one. I totally forgot that game in this list. I went through <laughs> all my games and just kind of scoured the card games, but I yeah. Did, I didn't. Look at this one. That's a good one. All right. My number one was also, like you said, as soon as we thought of this list, I thought this would be my number one and then kind of go from there. And yeah. this is one of my, I'm sure it's probably still in my top 30. It used to be in my top 20. I don't know for sure anymore, but this is Unfair, made in 2017 by Joel oh, Finch. Yes. And this one is, um, you can play it pleasantly. You can play it without the take that. Um, they also remade a game just called um, Fun Fair that has none of the take that in it. But I like that you can play it both ways. So it's neat because if I'm teaching somebody it for the first time, we will typically play without the take that. But I've played it quite a few times with the take that. And it's interesting because the one time I played with another couple I guess they are considered a couple and <laughs> they just went after <laughs> each other and I just did my own thing and I just destroyed them because they were just you know completely attacking each other and left me alone and so my theme park I guess I'll describe how you played the game is um you were building up a theme park and it's basically a card tableau building game which of course I love and you are just building up each um attraction and trying to have as many different um upgrades on it as possible because those are kind of like multipliers the more you have the um, better points you'll have per ride. And you ha can have a max of five, I believe. There are some cards that will allow you to have more. But um, the neat thing is there's all these different themes in the game and each person who's playing picks out a theme and then you mix all the cards together. So um, the base game has like gangster, um, Western, or maybe that's not even the base, but there's just like there's robots, there's... Um, dinosaurs. There's just all kinds of different things um, that you can add in. And so if you play a three player game, you're having three different types of um, themes in there. And it's neat because not that doesn't mean you have to only have that theme. It just means that's what's in the game. So I could have some Western, I could have some gangsters in my park, but it depends what your um, blueprints are that are going to tell you like what it basically your goal cards because you each get I think one or two at the beginning and you want to try to complete those goals because they're worth big points and if you don't there is like a negative point value if you don't get something so it's neat because it might just say like you need to have this type of attraction but you need to have at least two western themed upgrades on it and so you're just trying to get that 
Now, the take part of it is you have these event cards that you play at the beginning of the round, and a lot of them are just to help you throughout the game. But so they have a top part of the card, which is like a, a positive thing. But the bottom part is usually a take that to somebody else. So you might be able to close one of their rides down completely, one of their attractions. You might be able to steal staff from them. Um, and you can do all these different types of things that really crushes you that round. It, it doesn't actually destroy your whole game, but it does that round. Because if you close that ride down or you take one of their um upgrades away and that could literally have been what they needed on their blueprint card and you've been literally not just taken points away from them but gave them negative points so nice. it's 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 such a neat game because the cards are all so unique and how you play them and like do i you know attack or just worry about building my own theme park up it's so fun i love it i love all the different cards they had like two different expansions that added more themes which I mean, there's probably like 12 themes now, but it's just so neat how you can mix and match them all. And I think the the second expansion actually added a solo play, which I haven't tried yet, but those um, tableau builders I find are a really good way to, to play solo because it's um, mm. you kind of playing against always a like an AI and it's not just a beat your own score. So that's kind of neat because it's, you feel like you're kind of playing somebody in that, but it's such a neat game i've played this um for the first time at the cafe years and years ago and then i kept thinking about it, thinking about it and i finally was like i have to have this game so i bought it but um i used to play it used to be just me and cherry who played all the time especially in the covid years and she doesn't really like this game so i didn't get it to the table much but ashley likes this now and you said you like the game too so i have we'll be able to get it out more often now, but yeah, that's my number one mm -hmm. unfair. Unfair. Yeah. That's cool. There's yeah. a few theme park games out there. Yeah. Like I've also played danger park and then steam or is it steam park? Oh, steam. Yeah. The one with the robots. That one's neat too. Steam yeah. park. Is it steam I can't park? remember if it's called steam park and, but yeah, yeah it's, it's just not one that you would think would be such a common theme, but there's been a few games yeah. out there. That's, mm -hmm. that's been very interesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that sounds cool. That's a neat, that's a neat one for this list for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So those are our top nine. Take that games. We'll see if you can yeah. play those on Valentine's day and still agree afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that'll be interesting <laughs> mind you last year around this time we did our top two player games that we like to play with our spouse so if you want friendlier games go look at that one but if you want to you know put yourself to the test or your valentine's killers then this is this is this list for that yeah exactly yeah Bernie. and so next week we are going to give you um, a recap of Car Treat and see all the different yes. games and activities that happened at the retreat and uh, what that was all about. Yeah, um, spoiler alert! It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> always have. Yes. It doesn't matter where we are though. If we just have games with us, we could literally be yeah. in a ditch somewhere playing games, and we would still find a way to have fun with them. <laughs> I think it's yeah, just the people sure. who were around that makes it so much fun, right? We doesn't matter. Yeah, no, we're where, a good group but, too. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's lots of fun. Yes, yeah. but until next time, where can people find you? So we have our Discord channel. Be sure to check us out there. We've mm -hmm. been actually pretty active on there lately. And yeah. Lots of people participating. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, we'll make sure we have the link down below. Uh, on Instagram, I'm Mal's underscore board game underscore room. My uh, Facebook page is Mal's board game room. And my YouTube channel is Mal's board game room. Um, how about you, Carla? Where can we find you? I'm at Instagram um, board game specialist, all one word. and I have a Facebook page called Red Deer Board Game Fanatics. And yes, do try to get into the, the Discord. It's a lot of fun. And most times, well, Mal always posts her games. I have been pretty <laughs> good this year plays, posting a lot of the games I've been playing. And it's so it's kind of neat because then we get others and they're posting what they're playing. So we kind of get yes. to all see what we're playing. And and then we all want to play each other's games. So it's <laughs> it's just fun. But 
lots of good little memes in there that you guys post. <laughs> the one today funny, was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, until next time, thanks for listening. Bye, everybody. because worms